Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, the chair of this subcommittee, and we are joined by Councilmember Ku as well. Today we will hold public hearings on the site selection of a new 300 six seat pre-k center within a portion of Flushing Meadows Park in Queens and the designation and disposition of property for an urban development action area project to develop 41 affordable housing units in the East New York neighborhood of Brooklyn. The first item we will hear is pre-considered application number 20185509 SCQ submitted by the New York City School Construction Authority pursuant to section 1732 of the Public Authorities Law for approval of a site selection for a new approximately 306 seat pre-kindergarten center to be located on block 2018, part of Lot 1 in Community School District 21 in Queens. The site is located within a portion of Flushing Meadows Corona Park, adjacent to the New York Hall of Science. The New York State Legislature has approved the use of the land for pre-K, but the land will remain within the jurisdiction and control of the Parks Department, subject to a lease. This pre-kindergarten will be located in Chermoya's district. We are now joined by SCA members, Kelly Murphy, and Gail Mendon. Okay. Council, please swear in the panel. Please raise your right hands and state your names. Turn on the mic. Turn on the mic. Can you make sure the microphone is turned on? Sorry about that. Can you restate your names? Kelly Murphy, Gail Mandaro. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in response to all council member questions? I do. I do. Thank you. You may begin. Do this. Sorry about that. Um, is it in PowerPoint? I know. I'm just trying to. Have it. We'll start with um, overview of the site before we get into the formal. Um, request of the council. Um, so I can't see if I'm doing this right here. Sorry. It's not, it's not in this correctly. Hold on. Why is this not? Yeah, I'm just not sure. Doesn't look like it's in the PowerPoint. Slides, you know what I mean? I have paper copies. Would that be easier? Just to there we go. <laughs> uh, That's fine. There we go. Thank you. So uh, this is just an overview of the site. You can see where the yellow star is. It's where the proposed uh, pre-K center will be located um, within Flushing Meadows Corona Park um, in the part of the parking lot and uh, grass area along 111th Street. This is just the proposed site plan where you can see it in relation to the Hall of Science and uh, the reconfigured parking that will be part of the project. And this is just some images to show this is really just um, parking and an unimproved kind of grass area where the proposed 3K will be. There's just some more images of that site today. Well, actually, probably a couple of months ago, there's no leaves on the trees. And this is the final thing. Um, part, of the, uh, part of the project, it's within uh, 43,515 square feet is the area that um, is considered part of the project, but it will be built on a smaller portion, about 35,000 square feet. Um, it will have approximately 306 seats and contains 17 classrooms, um, exercise room, warming pantry, administrative um, space. And um, what's interesting about this 3K is that it will have a STEM focus. So there's um, Department of Education is looking to partner with air, uh, community groups to focus on that kind of education at this level. Um, and then this is just some renderings of the proposed building. Um, this is uh, looking uh, from the west view, so you see the full site with the uh, play yard up front. 
This is the um, southeast view of the building. It's about three stories and about 53 feet tall. And this is um, the full view of the site. So I'll do the formal portion now. So thank you for having uh, Gail and I here today. We're here, the School Construction Authority has undertaken the site selection process for a new pre-kindergarten facility on a site on block 2108, portion of lot one, within Flushing Meadows Corona Park in the borough of Queens. The site contains a total of approximately 43,516 square feet on a lot located along 111th Street between 45th and 46th Avenues. The land in which the proposed pre-K center is to be located has been approved by the New York State Legislature for this pre-K center use. It's located within the Corona neighborhood within Community District 4 in Queens and Community Education Council 24. Under the proposed project, the SCA will construct a new approximately 360 pre-kindergarten facility. The notice of the filing of the site plan was published in the New York Post in, on June 4, 2018 and the city record on June 5, 2018 and Queen Community Board 4, CEC 24 um, were notified of this site plan proposal on June 6, 2018. On June 12, 2018, Community Board 4 held a hearing on the site plan and the City Planning Commission submitted comments in support of this application. The SCA has considered all comments received on the proposed site plan and affirms site plans pursuant to Section 1731 of the Public Authorities Law. In accordance with Section 1732 of the PAL, the SCA submitted the proposed site plan to the Mayor and City Council by letter dated August 2, 2019. We look forward to your comments and questions. Thank you very much for your testimony today. This, this is very interesting um, to me. The site is very, very interesting. It's a lovely site. Uh, we all know Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, uh, lovely. Uh, especially Councilmember Kuh and myself were very well acquainted. Was, was there ever anything on this area? Or was it always vacant? Was it always? It's partly parking lot that services the Hall of Science and um, during the summers for the tennis um, tournament. Mm -hmm. And then part of it is just an unimproved kind of grassy area closer to 111th Street where the entrance of the building will be. Yeah, it's very creative. Um, so we need to do more of that citywide. If we can just get as creative as, as we are right here for this site, I think that would be a fantastic thing to do. So um, I'm going to have my eyes peeled for creative ideas like this also in, in Southeast Queens if we can do. Was the vote uh, with Community Board 4, was it unanimous? Actually, there wasn't a vote taken. They had a hearing and they never issued any was recommendation no vote. For, at all. Were there any concerns at all by the Community Board? They were mostly traffic related. Sure traffic and parking and all the usual. Standard. Exactly. Especially I say that's us, a pretty common well as, yeah. uh, concern when mm -hmm. we cite schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the general feeling that you got from the board seemed to be pretty positive. I think there's a great need for the seats in this area. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Department of Education has a number of um, temporary units already uh, around the surrounding schools in play yards actually yeah. that are servicing this need now that this new uh, pre-K will allow those to be removed and play yards back to those primary schools mm -hmm. and, and these children um, to be in this brand new facility. Okay, all right, thank you. Councilmember Ku, did you have questions? Uh, no, I have no question, but this is a wonderful project. I hope you can proceed as soon as possible, yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to call our next panel. All right, if there are no uh, members of the public that wish to testify before we go into the next panel, okay, seeing none. This uh, public hearing item is now closed. We'll call up uh, Gail Menden and Kelly Murphy. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll call you back again someday soon. The next item we will hear is pre-considered application number C190286AHAK, the East New York 
North NCP UDAP. The application was submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law, for the designation of an urban development action area and the approval of an urban development action area project, and pursuant to Section 197-C of the New York City Charter for the disposition of property located at 190 Essex Street, Block 3956, Lot 59, 227 Vermont Street, 225 Vermont Street, and 223 Vermont Street, Block 3706, Lots 12, 13, and 14, and 583 Belmont Avenue, and 581 Belmont Avenue, Block 4012, Lots 32 and 34. These properties are in Council Member Espinal's district in Brooklyn. The application this application will facilitate the development of three fully affordable three-story residential buildings, providing 41 units of affordable housing. Okay, we'll call up uh, Lacey Tauber and uh, Deborah Weiderkels. Okay. Okay, before you begin, council will swear you in. Please raise your hand, right hands and state your names. Debbie Whitaker. Press the button. No, that might turn your mic off. Oh. Sorry, uh, my name is Deborah Whitaker. Um, Lacey Tauber, HPD. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee in response to all council member questions? Yes. We did. Thank you. Okay, you may begin. Thank you. Great. Here, I just want to hand this to the sergeant. Thank you. Okay. Um, this pre-considered item is related to a yield of application seeking UDAP designation disposition approval for six city-owned vacant lots and project approval for a project known as East New York North. The project is located at 190 Essex Street. Uh, 223 Vermont Street and 581-583 Belmont Ave in Brooklyn Council District 37. East New York North is slated for development under HPD's Neighborhood Construction Program, NCP, which funds infill rental housing projects with up to 45 residential units affordable to low, moderate, and middle income households. The development team for East New York North was chosen through a competitive process in April 2017 and proposes to construct three buildings with a total of 41 affordable rental units plus a superintendent's unit. The project includes a 12% homeless set aside, which is approximately five units for families referred from other social service agencies such as the Department of Homeless Services, DHS. Upon completion, the buildings will be three stories with a total of 22 one-bedroom units and 19 two-bedroom units with one two-bedroom unit for the superintendent. The target incomes for this project will be up to 70% of the area median income, AMI, with rents affordable to families with incomes between 27% and 67% AMI. This is approximately $481 for a one-bedroom apartment and $588 for a two-bedroom apartment at the lower income tiers to approximately $1,281 for a two-bedroom and $1,545 for a two-bedroom apartment at the highest income tier. The buildings will be built to meet enterprise green community standards. Additionally, building amenities will include a laundry room, enclosed bike parking, and a recreational rear yard in all three proposed buildings. In order to facilitate the development of the East New York North NCP project, HPD is before the landmark subcommittee seeking approval of this land use item. Thank you. 
Good, good afternoon, and uh, I bring regrets from our uh, partner, Sheila Bennett from East Brooklyn Congregation. She was hoping to be with us uh, this afternoon, but she is uh, under the weather today, so she sends her regrets. So uh, this project was uh, certified by city planning in February, and uh, as uh, Lacey has mentioned, we were designated as the development team in 2017. Uh, the team includes East Brooklyn Congregations, the Markal Group, uh, M. Lappin and Associates, and uh, we're uh, asking for designation as an urban development action area and disposition of city-owned property. So, uh, as I mentioned, East Brooklyn Congregations is one of the managing members. Their primary responsibility uh, has been and will be for community outreach. Uh, the Mark Cal Group, uh, also a managing member, will be the general contractor. And M. Lappin and Associates is uh, the last managing member and will be uh, doing project management, doing pre-development and the construction phase as well. The architect is Delacour, Ferrara, and Church. The, this show this map shows the the three sites uh, as you can see they're a little bit uh, scattered uh, and they're all in community board five and uh, uh, the council members uh, uh, district so the pro the program uh, anticipates 22 one bedroom and 19 uh, two bedroom rental units and the two bedroom for the super uh, ranging from 30% of area median income uh, affordable up to 70% of area median income with a, a, a distribution, you know, uh, pretty uh, pretty consistently throughout the, that range. The the highest or the lowest rent is $481 up to $1,549 for the the two bedroom unit, the highest income range. And the, the affordability ranges from 21,000 and change up to uh, um, just under $75,000. The, where did the, they have, they have printouts. It appears the, uh, I think the PDF um, didn't load all the way, so I guess we can turn to the printouts. Yes, yeah, so our, our apologies. Sure. If you want to fix it. Okay. I don't know if I can, but let's see. This one is not the best one. Sorry, if you want to see it. It's okay. There we go. Yeah, okay. perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So the first development site is 190 Essex Street, which is just south of Fulton, uh, on the west side of Essex, and uh, we anticipate 15 uh, rental units and uh, just over 13,000 of zoning floor area. This is the aerial view. Uh, this is a rendering of the the building nine one bedrooms six two bedrooms and uh this is our site plan you'll see the the lot is a is a in a regular shape and so the the building itself is also uh, a little bit irregular it, it's barbell shaped which allows us a couple of courtyards uh, which will bring in greenery and some light and air uh, and then there's a recreational rear yard for the tenants use and the front of the building matches the the front of the adjacent buildings and the door is uh, front door is a little pulled back to give uh, some a uh, little bit of privacy there this is our ground floor plan you'll see the utilities and storage and such is in the front of the building toward the street and then most of the 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 residential units are toward the rear uh, the next site is at 223-227 Vermont Street. Again, three stories, 11 units, and uh, just over 10,000 zoning square feet. It's uh, on Vermont between Liberty and Glenmore. 
This is the rendering of five one bedrooms, six two bedroom units. Uh, the, and here's our site plan. The main entrance to the building is on the, the uh, south side of the building uh, in, a, in an entryway off, uh, off Vermont. And uh, there's, uh, you'll see also the rear yard, which is a, a garden area for the residents' use. And the front of the building is pulled back a little from the street to, to add a little bit of privacy there. Uh, this is our first floor plan, and you'll see that there's access, there are two access ways to the, the rear yard. The, uh, there's a vestibule in the middle center of the building that goes out to the garden area, as well as the, the uh, entry uh, uh, area from the street will also go back to the, to the garden area, but uh, there'll be a gate at the street street level. Um, the utilities also are on the ground floor and then a couple of residential units as well. And this is our third site at 581 Belmont. Uh, three stories, 15 units, and just over 12,000 uh, zoning square feet. It's at the corner of Belmont Avenue and Skank Avenue. Uh, here's, you'll see the rendering uh, eight one-bedroom, eight two-bedroom units, and this is where we would uh, plan for the super to be because it's uh, uh, central to the other uh, uh, properties. And here's our site plan. Uh, you'll see that we've, we've uh, pulled it back a little bit from the corner uh, and uh, at the street and have plantings and such along the, the street to give some uh, buffer. And then there's a garden area in the in the uh, backs of the buildings for uh, residents' use. Uh, here's our ground floor plan, and uh, the access to the the garden area will be through the uh, vestibule, uh, you know, on the uh, north side of the building. And the main entrance is along uh, Belmont, on the southern side. So uh, a, a quick uh, a couple of highlights about our economic development. Uh, uh, plans. EBC and the Markal Group will work with uh, local workforce development uh, partners to refer candidates to the GC and subcontractors for hiring. Uh, we plan to post open positions with NYCHA's resident economic empowerment and sustainability department. And uh, EBC has a long history of hiring local for the residential properties that it does own and manage. Uh, well, it doesn't directly manage, but uh, the, the buildings that it owns. And uh, EBC will conduct community outreach during the rent up to uh, meet the community uh, board set asides. And lastly, uh, like um, I, I would assume, most, if not all, of HPD's uh, programs, HPD will uh, establish an MWBE uh, goal for contracting, and uh, our general contractor, the Markel Group, has uh, a history of using MWBEs for expediting and security, but it will also solicit MWBE bids for other trades, framing, plumbing, electric, insulation, sheetrock, painting, and, and flooring, among other things. So, uh, and... Uh, Lastly, to, to summarize again, three three-story three residential buildings with 41 rental units plus a two-bedroom supers unit. Um, all of the buildings will have bike storage and closed laundry rooms and uh, recreational gardens in the rear yards. Um, and we're working at, at this point with uh, the enterprise community uh, to develop a community health action plan centered around healthy food choices and healthy eatings and, you know, garden, gardening. So uh, uh, our timeline here is we, uh, we're anticipating, with the, the council's approval, of course, uh, completing ULERP uh, shortly and then a closing uh, toward the end of this calendar year and then construction start immediately thereafter with completion uh, late 2021 and lease up uh, late 2021, early 2022. So, so we'd be happy to uh, take any questions and uh, thank you again for your consideration. Thank you for your testimony today. Thank you very much. 
Um, my questions uh, again will, oh, we've been joined by Councilmember Barron. Um, just to get a flavor of how the community feels about these, um, these development sites going up, how these sites are going up, can you just give me, uh, give us a, a flavor of the reception by the local community boards when it, when it came to bringing these uh, projects before them? Okay, well, uh, I, can, I can tell you that we did uh, receive a letter of support from uh, the, the council member. We also uh, submitted our proposal to the, to the community board and uh, we met with the community board early on, you know, before we uh, started the Euler process, and they were receptive. Um, and then we presented, or we were scheduled to present, but we were, the community board wasn't able to field a quorum. So we've not, I've not, I'm not aware of any uh, comments. So my HPD. Uh, partners are saying they did not receive any comments from the community board, so. Okay, do we know uh, if this was voted out of the community board, how the votes might have gone? No? It wasn't voted out? It was not. Okay. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Council members? Okay, if we could just talk just a little bit. Um, okay, we'll just pause for a couple of seconds. Thank you, just bear with us.
tree planting. Yeah. Um, This is 2017 ACS. Right, I mean, this shows it as. Mm -hmm. uh, this shows it as. Wikipedia says 101. Yeah, that's what this is too. And that's for a family of. Do you that's, know? No, it's not based on the class. It's yeah. the that's Okay, thank you for your patience. Uh, were there questions? Council members? Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony today. Thank you. you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Consistent with the affected council members' recommendations, we will now vote to approve the pre-considered applications related to the siting of a 360 seat pre-kindergarten in Flushing Meadows Corona Park, application number 2018-5509-SCQ, and the East New York NCP UDAP, application number c 19028 6 hak we will also vote to approve LUs 477 and 478 related to the 201-207 7th Avenue project. These applications, which we heard at our July 16th meeting, will facilitate a mixed-use development containing approximately 26 affordable cooperative residential units and commercial space in the Speaker's District in Manhattan. I now call for a vote to approve LUs 477 and 478 and pre-considered LUs related to applications 201-85509 SCQ and C190286 A H A K Council, please call the roll. Adams. I vote aye. Barron. I vote aye. Ku. I vote aye. By a vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions, the items are recommended for referral to the Foley and Land Use Committee. Thank you, and this concludes today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.